Good afternoon. Today, I, Dr. Shraddha Joshi, PG resident in the Department of Radio Diagnosis at APVIMS and Dr. Ariman Hospital, New Delhi. I'm presenting an oral paper on the comparison of ultrasound and MRI ORADs. The co-author of this paper is Dr. Kavita Vani, who is a consultant in the Department of Radio Diagnosis at APVIMS and Dr. Ariman Hospital, New Delhi. Introduction. Adnexal masses are the most common gynecological disorders. They include lesions arising from the ovaries, fallopian tubes, broad ligament, and adjacent neurovasculature. Ovarian tumors are the most common at axial masses. Non-invasive imaging modalities include pelvic ultrasound, CT, and MRI. However, the gold standard for diagnosis is histopathological evaluation of the laparotomy specimen. Pelvic ultrasound is the initial imaging modality for evaluation of axial masses. It is low cost, accessible, does not carry radiation hazard, and can be repeated multiple times without any adverse effects, making it optimal for follow-up. However, it is operator dependent and is limited by body habitus and acoustic windows. Pelvic MRI is the investigation of choice for evaluation of adnexal masses. It has better spatial and tissue resolution, does not carry radiation risk, and has high accuracy in characterization of mass and staging of malignancy. However, it is a high-cost modality with limited availability and carries a risk of contrast reactions. Aim of our study is to evaluate the benefit of ultrasound ORADs as compared to MRI ORADs methodology. This was a prospective cross-section study conducted in the Department of Radio Diagnosis at ABVIMS and Dr. RMN Hospital, New Delhi. 30 consecutive patients were referred to the Department of Radio Diagnosis over a course of four months were evaluated by ultrasound and MRI. Pelvic ultrasound was conducted in a moderately distended bladder using Alpineon E-cube machine with a low-frequency curvilinear probe. And pelvic contrast enhanced MRI was conducted using Siemens Skyra 3D MRI machine. Results, age of the patients ranged from 17 to 65 years with a mean age of 35.6 years. 22 females were premenopausal and 8 females were postmenopausal. The most common lesion identified on ultrasound was a follicular cyst in 9 patients, and the most common USG ORAS category assigned was ORAS 1 in 10 patients. This is a tabular representation of the adnexal lesions identified on ultrasound and MRI. In this study, the sensitivity of ultrasound was compared to that of MRI. Follicular cysts were identified in 9 patients, hemorrhagic cyst in 4 patients, and corpus luteal cyst in 1 patient. Out of the 7 patients with unilocular cyst, Two patients had cysts with internal septa, two patients had cysts with internal solid components, and three patients had cysts without any internal septa or solid components. Out of the four patients with multilocular cysts identified on ultrasound, three patients had multilocular cysts without solid component, and one patient had a cyst with solid component. Two adnexal solid lesions and two hydrosalpines were also identified on ultrasound. This is a comparison of ORAX category assigned on ultrasound and MRI. As we can see, 10 patients were diagnosed as ORADS category 1 lesions on both ultrasound and MRI. One patient with ORADS category 2 on ultrasound was upgraded to ORADS category 3 on MRI. Two patients with ORADS category 3 on ultrasound were upgraded to ORADS category 4 on MRI. And one patient with ORADS category 4 was upgraded to ORADS category 5 on MRI. Both ultrasound and MRI could diagnose four patients with ORADS category 5 lesions. Causes for upgradation of ORADS category on MRI included size and number of papillary projections in unilocular cyst, presence of solid component in a multilocular cyst, and wall enhancement and type of dynamic contra contrast enhancement curve on MRI. Coming to ORADS category 1 lesions, the type of lesions included a follicular cyst less than 3 cm in 9 patients and a corpus luteal cyst less than 3 cm in 1 patient. This is an axial ultrasound image depicting bulky right ovary with a follicular cyst and an adjacent simple cyst with internal echo suggestive of a hemorrhagic cyst. Coming to ORADS 2 lesions, the type of lesions included a simple cyst less than 10 cm in one patient, a typical endometrioma in one patient, a typical peritoneal inclusion cyst in one patient, and a typical hydrosalpings in two patients. The first image is an adnexal lesion depicting a cyst with internal echoes and septations, giving it a fishnet appearance suggestive of a hemorrhagic cyst. And the second set of images are axial ultrasound and corresponding post-contrast MR image depicting a dilated tubular structure suggestive of hydrosalpings on the left side and a well-defined heteroechoic lesion in the right adnexa suggestive of a tubo-ovarian axis. Coming to ORADS category 3, the lesions included were simple cyst more than 10 cm in one patient, a unilocular cyst with irregular inner wall less than 3 mm in one patient, a typical peritoneal inclusion cyst more than 10 cm in one patient and a multilocular cyst in three patients. This is an ultrasound and corresponding P2 
axial, coronal, and sagittal image of a multilocular cyst with internal septations. Coming to ORADS category four, the type of patients included a unilocular cyst less than three papillary projections in one patient, a multilocular cyst with solid component with a color score two in one patient, a multilocular cyst with irregular walls and internal septations in one patient, and a solid lesion with a color score of two in one patient. This is an ultrasound and corresponding post-contrast MR image depicting a multilocular cyst in the left ovary with internal septations. Coming to ORADS category 5, the lesions included were a unilocular cyst with more than three papillary projections in one patient, a multilocular cyst with solid component with a color score of three in one patient, a solid lesion with a color score of four in one patient, and ascites and peritoneal nodules in one patient. These are the USG images depicting a complex cyst in the right adnexa with internal separations and solid components, and a solid cystic lesion in the left ovary with overlying peritoneal nodules. This is an ultrasound image in the same patient depicting a hyperechoic lesion in the liver with separated ascites. And this is a coronal post-contrast MR image of the same patient depicting a bulky right ovary with an adjacent cystic lesion with enhancing walls and multiple papillary projections. Discussion. Ovarian tumors represent the most common adnexal lesions. Although ultrasound is the initial imaging modality for evaluation, it is operator dependent and may be limited by acoustic windows. MRI has a high spatial and tissue resolution with a high accuracy in identifying tissue of origin, characterization of lesions, and pre operative planning. Ultrasound was limited in the evaluation of origin of adnexal masses, internal septations and solid components, and internal vascularity. Few lesions were upgraded on MRI ORADs based on the number of papillary projections, the height of solid components, and the type of enhancement curve on dynamic imaging, wall enhancement, and contents of hydrosulfates. This is in accordance with previous studies which state that MR has a high accuracy in evaluation and characterization of adnexal masses. Our study was limited by the small sample size and selection bias. Conclusion, the most common adnexal mass in our study was a follicular cyst followed by a unilocular cyst. The most common ORADS category assigned was ORADS-1. In few lesions, ORADS category was upgraded on MRI based on morphological characteristics and enhancement characteristics. MRI has a higher sensitivity than ultrasound in the evaluation of origin and characterization of adnexal masses. These are my references. Thank you.